Thank you very much, Radaji. It was so kind of you to invite me. I'm honored and humbled by your kind invitation to deliver the Besant Lecture this year. And uh, I would like to, at your invitation, speak about Buddhism. Now, that's a very general topic. And when we think of Buddhism, we could think of the two parts of the word, Bud and Ism. Now, the Ism of Buddhism is not really the wisdom of Buddhism or the Buddha himself, but rather the organized religion, the teachings as they have been handed down, the spreading of the teachings to various countries from its mother country, India, to Sri Lanka, Thailand, Burma, Laos, Cambodia, even to Bangladesh and Ma Malaysia, Indonesia, and also Vietnam, China, and Korea, Japan, as well as um, Tibet, of course, and even countries like um, Pakistan and Afghanistan, and even beyond, were influenced by the teachings of the Gautama Buddha. And nowadays also you find a surge of uh, the spreading of Buddhism to non-Asian countries, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and also United States, even South America and Europe. There are a lot of Buddhism centers, Buddhist centers, in those countries of various denominations, from the Theravada, the oldest school, to um, Mahayana of various uh, shades and uh, forms of the Japanese, Korean, Chinese, and Vietnamese forms, as well as, especially since the invasion into um, Tibet, the spreading of Tibetan Buddhism around the world, of which His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the great propounder and um, the one and only, I would say, main figure who has uh, helped to make the Buddha's teachings uh, really well known in the non-traditional Buddhist countries and the West especially. So then the ism part of Buddhism is actually the organized religion. When people ask, is Buddhism really a religion? Or is it a philosophy? Or is it a way of life? I usually say that it is something of all three. Because um, it is, in a sense, an organized religion, because it has its founder, Gautama Buddha, Prince Siddhartha, who became enlightened more than 2,500 years ago. And um, it has its followers, it has its monks and nuns, its monasteries, its uh, holy texts, its scriptures, which were, by the way, written down a few hundred years after being orally transmitted from generation to generation. So there is a whole uh, a whole bulwark, you could say, of uh, Buddhist uh, organized religion in the form of temples and uh, Sangha, the monks and nuns and the followers, as well as the teachings in the form of the Tipitaka in Pali, Tripitaka in Sanskrit, the three baskets in which the teachings have been uh, put in and systematized, canonized, you could say like the, um, the rules and the regulations for the Sangha, as well as the sutras, the sayings, the discourses that the Buddha has given in various lengths, the shorter sayings, the medium sayings, the long sayings, the numerical sayings, and so on. It has all been uh, systematized and written down, and in that sense, you could say Buddhism is a kind of organized, religion. However, although it is organized, it is one of the religions which is, I think, the least organized in the sense of 
um, not imposing its uh, teachings on individuals, but rather leaving it up to the individual to research it, to study it, and to accept it if they find it reasonable, not against our feelings and uh, reason. And uh, the Buddha had actually told to the Kalamas in the Kalama Sutta, don't accept anything just because it is accepted by the majority of people, or because it has been written down in the scriptures, or because your teacher tells you, or even because I'm telling you, just figure out for yourself whether this is reasonable, whether it leads to 